In this video, we're gonna compare two VFX and compositing software, and these are After Effects and Nuke. I will show you their differences and similarities, as well as which one is more suitable for you and your needs. We're gonna start first with the industries they are used in. So both of them are used in multiple industries, starting with the VFX industry in what we call the post-production stage, which will occur after filming has taken place, which is in post-production, where we do VFX compositing that I mentioned before. Nuke tries to focus on that, and it is the main industry where it shines. It was used to composite some of the most popular movies and TV series of all time, such as Game of Thrones, Blade Runner, and Deadpool. As for After Effects, its use cases range from VFS compositing to motion graphics and 2D animation. It can also be used as a hybrid video editing tool, so in a sense, it is more of a general toolbox. If you are on a tight budget and need to do all of those tasks, After Effects offers a good value for your money, and in my opinion, it is the best when it comes to 2D motion graphics. Some of you guys may argue that Nuke can also be used in those fields, but I don't think that it is as good as After Effects because it is not timeline based. Nuke tries to focus more on compositing, which is more advantageous, and this is what we're gonna discuss next. Both can produce excellent results in post-production, but Nuke offers more flexibility and handles large scenes better. Its advanced features allow us to fine-tune almost anything to perfection. After all, it is widely used in the industry for a reason. Its layout was designed to make complex compositions easier, and with 3D workspace, deep composition and more, Nuke offers more variety in compositing. With the general comparison out of the way, let's now take a look at the tools. After Effects includes all the standard compositing tools, such as a pen tool for masking, a rotoscoping tool, as well as chroma key tools for green screen removal, camera trackers, various types of blurs, track mats, a variety of blending nodes, and a tent wear fill tool to remove all the elements from your footage, such as wires that actors commonly attach to themselves. On the other hand, Nuke includes alternative node versions of those tools, such as the Blur node, the IBK key you're for keying, Transform Mask for removing elements from the footage, a Roto node for masking, and of course camera trackers, in addition to different blending nodes and so on. When it comes to tracking, both programs include tracking tools that produce excellent results, whether they are used for 3D or 2D. Mocha and After Effects makes tracking easier if you are new, but Nuke's tool set is arguably superior and can track your footage faster. It is especially much more flexible with how you use the tracking information, and it's much easier to manage multiple trackers, but After Effects is also decent at that. Alright, now we're gonna compare the color correction features of these two programs. Nuke once again has an advantage in this area as well. It has far more precision in its color correction tools, and it is also better at color management, but After Effects is still a viable option if you don't mind not being too precise, or your footage not matching as well as you want it to be. Still, it can produce results that are good enough and excellent sometimes. When it comes to masking tools, their masking tools almost work the same way. They both use a pen for that, but I find that the pen tool in Nuke is more pleasing and easier to handle, and it is simpler to keep track of multiple tasks due to the note system. It is also faster to do changes for them because in After Effects, you would have to open various pre-comps to do so. However, unlike Nuke, it includes a brush tool that can be used to automatically separate the foreground and the background, similar to masking. You can also figure out a solution to do that in Nuke as well, but it is not as linear, making it more difficult for beginners. And this is a good segue to talk about the interface. I believe After Effects is mostly better here, or at least less intimidating for beginners, because it has a timeline style layout with layers, similar to most video editing software, especially Adobe Premiere, because they are from the same company. After Effects is more user-friendly and easier to handle for most people. Nuke, on the other hand, has a node-based system, which can be intimidating for newcomers, but it will be very intuitive for you if you already have experience with 3D software, especially Houdini, and even Blender and Unreal Engine. If you don't have that experience, don't be discouraged to try it. It might take some time for you to understand it, but once you do, Nuke will give you more freedom with its layout and the ability to achieve advanced VFX stuff. Alright, now we're gonna talk about the third-party tools, I mean plugins and scripts. Without a doubt, After Effects has more plugins that you can take advantage of, I mean a lot. For example, let's talk about Particular from Red Giant's Trap Code Suite, which is my favorite third-party tool for After Effects. 
because it brings the power of 3D particle systems to the program, allowing you to create stunning effects such as magic, fire, smoke, and the list goes on. The rest of Trap Code Suite is also exciting. Red Giant also has an alternative set of tools for VFX compositing and After Effects. It includes solution for keying and tracking that is more premium than the standard After Effects tools, but also other exciting tools such as light and atmosphere effects, lens flares, distortion, and a lot more. Additionally, you can take advantage of Video Copilot's plugins, which are some of the best on the market today. This in addition to many plugins and many add-ons that we're gonna talk about in the future. Nuke also has an exciting set of third-party tools, such as V-Ray, that adds to the software lighting, shading, and rendering capabilities. Another plugin that I like is Nuke Point Render, a powerful plugin that allows you to create dense energy effects such as spells. This plugin makes it easy to come up with complex tools for your effects. Of course, there are many plugins for Nuke that we're gonna talk about in the future, because these are just some examples. And now we're gonna talk about their CPU and GPU usage. So both of them can run on GPU and CPU. However, if you have a good GPU, you can enable GPU acceleration in both for better performance. Results will vary depending on the GPU manufacturer and the model you have. So for this, you can do your research for more in-depth analysis on the subject and to gather more information. When it comes to the learning curve, both come with a variety of tools that require some time to understand. After Effects is more accessible and easier to learn, while Nuke has a steeper learning curve. But this is for a reason. The value you will get is more rewarding if you are interested in high-end VFX compositing, especially if you want to get a job in the VFX industry working on VFX movies and TV shows. Basically, both software are extremely popular, and there are a lot of free resources to learn from. And with patience and resilience, you will be able to really learn and master these programs. With that out of the way, now let's talk about their pricing and licensing plans. After Effects is a subscription-based software. You can get it for $21 a month or as a bundle with other Creative Cloud programs for a lower cost. When it comes to Nuke, it is a bit complicated because you have Nuke Basic, Nuke X, Nuke Studio, and Nuke Render. And each one of them have their prices and they can be rented as well. And they have versions for students, no commercial use, and Nuke Indie which is a great tool for solo artists who want to create high quality effects and compositing using Nuke, but they don't have the budget for that because it is substantially less expensive compared to the other licenses that you're gonna buy. Now, at the end, I would say that some of the takes were more subjective than others and opinions may vary, but I think that After Effects is good as an overall package, but Nuke is definitely more powerful for compositing and it is the go-to software if you want to reach the most advanced stages in this craft by getting a job in a VFX studio or working on films and TV shows, even though you could do that with After Effects as well, but it is less common. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.